Hey everybody, um, this is a video on a method that I came up with, at least I think I came up with it, as I was going through in problem solving. And it's a method of using or working with right triangles and using similar triangles and proportionality to keep my numbers manageable. Which means I'm trying to work with no calculator for as much as I can. And I think I came up with something. I don't know if it's unique. I don't know if it's new. But it's something that I think I'm going to continue to use. So what I want to walk through is that method, that strategy, to keep numbers small when working with right triangles. Okay, here it is. So you take a peek at the right triangle that I had on the opening screen. I take a look at that triangle, and if I was to do what I would call like a traditional solution... And let's say that the problem asked me to find x. Well, then if I'm going to work my way through and find the length of the hypotenuse, something very traditional could have been, you know, x squared is going to equal 20 squared plus 12 squared, my application of Pythagorean theorem. Let's say you skip over that blue line and you even go to something a little more direct to say, like, you know it's going to be the root of 400 plus 144, well then, you end up getting some pretty big numbers. And for some of us, squaring those numbers you see on the screen might have been enough. Or, you now get 544, and you have to take the root of that. So now, you're trying to reduce that radical and say, okay, 4 goes into 544... 1, 3, and 136 times, and then maybe you go, hey, 4 goes into that, 25 and 9, 34 times. And so you could then go through and say that x is 4 root 34. But notice, I had to work with some relatively big numbers. Okay. In another context, I was working through on Pythagorean triples and using proportionality to find actual dimensions. And I came across something a little different, a different strategy. So what am I talking about? Well, let me just get that diagram up again. So let's say that I had that exact same triangle, and I'm just going to put a little wavy line down the middle for an alternate solution. If I look at that triangle and I recognize that side 20 and side 12 has a shared factor. That is, 12 is 4 times 3, and 20 is 4 times 5, then I have a shared factor of 4. So, if I remove that shared factor of 4, so like, imagine I'm making all of my side lengths, obviously my diagram not drawn to scale, a fourth of the size then this side would be 3 and this side would be 5. Now, I could focus in on the fact that now my hypotenuse would actually be like x divided by 4, but I don't even care about that. I'm going to now solve for that hypotenuse. I'll just label it as something different so that we don't look back on the diagram and assume both are equal to x. What I can do is I can solve for y on my simpler triangle, and then blow it back up using their proportionality. So pretty quickly then, I know that y is going to be the root of 25, 5 squared, plus 9, 3 squared. y is going to be the root of 34. But now that I look back at that triangle, remember, they each had a common factor of 4. So if I want to blow that back up, enlarge it, then I know that x has to be 4 times the hypotenuse on the smaller triangle, 4 over 34. Take a look at that solution. I didn't have to work with big numbers at all. I got to keep all my numbers smaller, more manageable. I didn't need a calculator for any of that. Okay, I'm not sure if this is something new, but it's something that I don't know I'm going to walk away from. Okay, let's walk through another one. Okay, take a look at that triangle. I absolutely would not want to have to go through 
and square 42, square 12, add them together and then reduce. No. But instead, if I recognize that that triangle has a common factor, then I can look at that 12 and 42 and say, hey, that's 7 times 6 and that's 2 times 6. So that would be the same thing as having this right triangle with a 7 and a 2. Well, then I can go through and I can find the missing side on the blue triangle and blow it up. So my y is going to be root 49 minus 4, because I'm solving for one of the smaller sides. That's going to give me root 45. And look, even in this instance, I can see that that's a 9 times a 5. So I can reduce that radical right now, keeping my number small. What was the shared factor on my big triangle? It was 6. So now I need to take that and multiply it by 6. I just found the length of x, keeping my number super small and manageable. Okay, tell me, is this a new method? Is this something you've come across before? This is brand new to me, but I think I like it, and I think I'm going to keep working with it. Obviously, the method only works if the sides of the triangles that are given have a shared factor. But if they do, I think this is the most efficient approach. Okay, I hope you liked it. And I hope that it's something that you can add to your strategies when going through and working with right triangles. Okay, best of luck.